Okay, hi folks. In this video, I'm gonna answer three questions that keeps on coming up. So the three questions are as follows. The first is, how do you interpret this quantity, dt dn, and what does it have to do with the normal derivative? The second is, what does thermal insulation mean? And then the third uh, is related to this 2018-19 question 4c, um, calculating this t infinity quantity. So in question one, t here is a scalar field, so t of x, y, and z. And I'd like to determine what is the rate of change of t in the normal direction? So n is, so you imagine some space, n is some direction, at, uh, some, the normal direction to some surface, and you want to calculate what is the rate of change of t in that direction. You know from the initial chapters that the directional derivative dn t is equal to grad t dot n, like that. And so this is essentially what you write as dtdn. This dtdn is just a notation, it's just an item of notation. So whenever you see dtdn, you think normal derivative, you think I find the gradient and I dot that with the normal vector. So just as a simple example, suppose that my t is say uh, x plus y plus z, okay? And then let's say I wanna find the rate of change of this temperature in the direction one, zero, zero, I just take the gradient of t, so that's 1, 1, 1, and then I dot that with 1, 0, 0. This is equal to 1. Okay, so this is the rate of change of t in the direction n. The next item is what does thermal insulation mean? Thermal insulation um, simply means that there's no heat flux, okay? So imagine you have some kind of uh, object with a cooler, and the, the material for this cooler is designed in such a way that there is no heat flow. That's what you mean by thermal insulation. So thermal insulation means that, that there's no, uh, no heat flow out of the boundaries so here the boundaries are, we'll write that as dv, and so this tells you that you have q dot n is equal to zero on dv. q is the heat flow vector, right? And you know that by Fourier's law, q is equal to minus k grad t. So I know that q is equal to minus k grad t. So that tells you that you have uh, minus k grad t dot n equal to zero, and this is just dt dn. Okay, so that's the connection between item one and item two. Thermal insulation means that the normal derivative dt dn is equal to zero on all the boundaries, and dt dn is calculated in this fashion here by taking the gradient of t and then dotting that with n, okay? Let me give you an example. Suppose that I have a one-dimensional uh, one dimensional domain. So suppose I have a domain that runs from A to B. Here's A, here's B. And I want to measure the temperature in this domain. And, and you can imagine this to be like a very long cooler. And suppose I tell you that this cooler is thermally insulated. Right? What does that mean? It means that the derivative of the temperature in the normal direction on the boundaries is always zero. In this case, the boundary is at A and at B, is a, a one-dimensional problem, and so thermal insulation means that dt dx is equal to zero on x equal to A or B, okay? So for a one-dimensional problem, this is what thermal insulation means. For something more complicated, you would have to find the normal direction and then calculate it in the fashion we described in one. Okay? Okay, so now, uh, finally, let's talk about this um, question 4C in the exam last year. So question 4C, uh, essentially, essentially gave you a temperature field. I think it was x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And it firstly asks you to calculate uh, the initial energy where the volume was a sphere. So this is a sphere, 
and it asks you to calculate t squared of x0 dv. Okay, so this is the in initial energy contained within a, a unit sphere um, where the temperature is given by this function here. So you convert this to spherical coordinates and you put it into here and then integrate the dv. So this is one half triple integral over a sphere. This is in, in spherical coordinates, this is an r-squared, and then you have to square it again, so it's r-squared-squared. Squared. And then you have to multiply that by the Jacobian in spherical coordinates. Uh, and this is an r-squared sine of phi, d phi, d theta, d r, and then put in the appropriate domains for each of these things. So theta runs from 0 to pi, phi runs from 0 to pi, and r runs from 0 to 1. So in total, you have r to the 4 here, plus 2, r to the 6. So this is an integral of r to the 6. That gives you 1 7th um, r to the 7th evaluated from 0 to 1. And then you have to multiply that by 2 pi, which is the integral of d theta, and then multiply that by the integral of sine of phi from 0 to pi, which is 2. Okay, so in total the 2's cancel, and it looks like you're left with 2 pi over 7. Hopefully I've done that right. I've done that calculation wrong a few times. Uh, but this we'd write as the initial energy. This is e of, e of 0. Okay? So this was sort of the straightforward part of this difficult um, part of the question. And then the less straightforward part was to ask you, what is the uh, temperature uh, at infinity in time? So what is the steady state temperature in this problem? And in the question it had stated that the sphere was thermally insulated. So this was really difficult because I had never told students how to do this type of problem. Um, and what I wanted you to argue was that if the sphere is thermally insulated, then after a long time, right, the temperature would have to be constant everywhere within the sphere. Okay? And if the temperature is constant everywhere in the sphere, then by in addition to conservation of energy, the total energy would have to be conserved. Okay, so basically, um, E infinity, the energy at infinity is one half triple integral over the temperature at infinity in time. So this is infinity in time, right? The the energy after a long time, dV, and that would have to be the same as the initial energy in the system. Okay, and then all you have to do is figure out how to, how to compute this thing here. Now you would argue that t infinity is a, is a constant number, and I'll, I'll give you the intuition of why that is to be the case. And so this is t infinity squared over 2, and then the triple integral dv is equal to the number that you found in the previous part of the question. And then this is just the surface area of a sphere, so 4 over 3 pi r cubed, and it's a unit sphere, so it's just 1 cubed. And then now you, you can solve for the t infinity. So that was basically um, what I had wanted students to do. If you were able to get even close to this and you would have gotten full marks for the problem, you didn't have to calculate what, what t infinity was. Okay, so that's basically the end of the problem. You see, um, it, it was re related to two things. First is being able to calculate um, the spherical volume integral. And the second was to make this argument, this leap uh, of how to calculate the t infinity. Okay. Um, for this year, I don't expect you to know. Uh, I don't expect you to actually know how to calculate spher and spherical coordinates without the formulae. So, if if I do ask you to do anything involving spherical co coordinates uh, or polar coordinates, then I will give you the formulas for that. But actually, in this year, you don't actually have to memorize anything for this exam. Okay. Finally, I'm going to give you the intuition about this t infinity, um, which is a thought experiment. Okay. So imagine that you have a cooler, some sort of uh, an object that's thermally insulated, and then you put something hot in that cooler, like that. Okay? Then what would the temperature look like in this cooler if I were to plot the temperature as a function of x? So if I call this 0 to L here, 0 to L, and you were to plot the temperature, it might look like, initially it might look something like that. Okay, because it's hot in the middle here, and then it cools off at the edges. Okay. 
Now, heat is not allowed to escape from this object, right? So this thing here, you can measure the initial energy in the problem, and it's going to be one half the, in this case, it's a single integral of t squared of x0 dx. Okay, so, so I could have designed the question so that I say, what's the initial energy of the problem? You put in the initial temperature squared, integrate it from 0 to L, this is 0 to L, and that gives you the initial energy of the problem. And then you would argue that the energy here has to be conserved. The energy has to be constant because it's thermally insulated. Heat is not allowed to escape. So after a long time, E infinity, as t goes to infinity, then you have the same formula, but you just replace it with the, with the temperature at infinity. But you would argue that after a long time, the heat has spread out, right, and is basically constant. The heat would be constant everywhere, right? If you were to go away and come back after a long time, then you would expect that the temperature in, inside your cooler is now no longer localized at that hot spot, but everything has just chilled out and now it's constant. And the question is for you to calculate that constant, right? And then you could do that here. It would just be t infinity squared over 2 times the length of the domain, and then you equate that to what you calculated for the initial heat. And that gives you a way of calculating the t infinity. So this uh, problem 3 was an effort to kind of stretch that 2018-19 year to apply this um, idea to the case of a sphere. It's the same.